Hello and welcome. I am Nitin Gokhale and I am speaking to you from Leh, the capital of Union Territory of Ladakh. And I am privileged to have with me Northern Army Commander Lieutenant General Y.K. Zoshi, who has been at the forefront of India's response to the Chinese aggression in the Eastern Ladakh sector of the LAC for the past almost nine months. The disengagement process, which began last Wednesday, is underway right now. And uh, of course, we are going to speak to General Zoshi about uh, what happened in these past nine months and how the future roadmap uh, looks uh, when India and China start talking again. General Zoshi, thank you very much for your time and welcome to this program. Thank you. Always a pleasure talking to you, Nitin. <laughs> um, you know, we are speaking almost a week after the disengagement was announced or started. Uh, at uh, Pangangso Lake, both on the north and the south bank. How is it progressing? Uh, so, Nathan, the disengagement process started on the 10th of February and uh, it is progressing very well. It's progressing very, very smoothly, to say the least. Um, it was decided that we'll have the disengagement in four steps, you know, and uh, after graduating from one step to the other, we were to verify each step on the ground. We, we are continuously monitoring. And only once both the armies are satisfied with each other, that the step one has been you know, done to the satisfaction of each other, then we'll go to the next step. So uh, since it has started, continuously we are monitoring. We have our UAVs in the air. We're getting satellite imageries. We have vantage points where we have cameras placed. And we're continuously monitoring. Uh, the day starts every day, the disengagement process, with a flag meeting. Mm -hmm where uh, the entire day's activities are discussed. Well, it has already been decided, but again, we refresh that today, this is the activity that we're going to do. And uh, towards the end of the day, both sides send a hotline to each other, mm -hmm. confirming that the activities have been done. And uh, in case there is an issue with each other, then we again have a flag meeting, discuss it, the issues are resolved, and then we go to the it's next day's activity. It's done on the same day, the flag meeting, or the next day? No, it's on the issues. same day. Same day. On the same day. And we when have you morning. say hotline, these are written uh, communication? No, this is on the phone. On the phone. On the phone communication is okay. happening. So these four steps that you mentioned was basically to uh, dis uh, take the step, then verify, again uh, re-verify, and then uh, start the next Absolutely. step. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And okay. step one was, you know, the disengagement of the, the armor and mech, mm -hmm. which was, you know, in the most close proximity. Mm -hmm. And that has happened very, very smoothly. Mm -hmm. Um, the step two and three was the disengagement on the north and south bank, mm -hmm. and step four is the final disengagement will happen on the Rizangda Chingla complex. Okay. So that is the manner it was decided, and the important thing is that uh, it has been decided that once this phase of disengagement is over, within 48 hours we'll be having uh, another the tenth Kokomana level flag meeting, in which we will sort of discuss the resolution of the other friction areas. Right. But even in the uh, first phase, as, as we see it, you know, uh, the North and South Bank, uh, the four steps that you described, uh, this is all uh, written down. Basically, uh, entire agreement is uh, for yes. the first time in recent years, perhaps yes. this is written down, right? Yes, absolutely. It was written down and agreed mm -hmm. by both sides. And then, you know, once it was ratified by the higher headquarters, right. then the process started. Okay. So, uh, in this uh, almost uh, six, seven days that the process is on, uh, how has this uh, been done? Like you said, uh, you know, there is also one point that I had seen in the agreement about restoring landforms. Correct. What does that mean? So, you know, uh, some areas on the north bank, the Pele had occupied right up to finger four. Mm -hmm. And from finger four to eight, they had made a lot of infrastructure, dugouts, you know, tentage had come up, sangards had come up in large number of areas. And uh, so the entire landform, you would have seen on satellite imagery, some places they had made those maps as well. You know, so uh, as per the agreement, the entire landform, this entire area from finger four to finger eight will be restored back to April 2020. Oh, that's that's the very important point because uh, that's where I think the main dispute was. So the other uh, issue when it comes up about finger four, finger eight area where they are occupied in May 2020 is that, uh, and, and there is also this agreement, if, I, if you uh, can uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that now they will be east of uh, finger eight and we will be, uh, our troops will be at finger three, the uh, post that is there. Absolutely. Right. But, and no, uh, neither side will patrol in those uh, in-between areas. Absolutely. So, uh, some people have said, critics have said that uh, you, we have lost the right to go to finger eight, which we used to go. Uh, what do you have to say to that? No, this is a misrepresentation or misinterpretation of the agreement. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to look at it in this manner that our claim line is still finger eight. Right. 
the PLA is going back behind finger eight, mm-hmm. the behind our claim line. They are restoring the entire landform from finger four to finger eight back to April 2020. They will not carry out any activity to our side of finger eight, that is our claimed areas. Correct. It's a huge success. That's right. How, and they used to seeding? come up to finger four, right, earlier. They should come up to finger four. And their claim also remains at finger four. Their claims remain to finger four. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, like I said, we have to mm. see it in this manner yeah. that he is not doing any Anything. activity, military yeah. or otherwise, mm. in the areas claimed by us. Exactly. It is a huge success. It is. It is. In fact, uh, that was, uh, as uh, I think a former diplomat said, Indian diplomat, that uh, this is the best one could have expected uh, after all what they have done. Absolutely. But let's uh, move to South Bank now. You know, your action on 29th, 30th uh, August. Uh, would you see when you look back, uh, was it uh, that action that actually gave us uh, an equal footing in the negotiations? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That was a, you know action which was done uh, on the 29th and 30th, which finally turned the tables on the PLA and got him back to the negotiating table. Mm-hmm. You know, prior to August 29th, uh, August 29th 30th, mm-hmm. we already had five Kokomana level flag meetings. Right. We were on the back foot, you know, he had occupied certain areas on the North Bank. Mm. He was in a, a dominating um, locations. But post 29th, 30th of August, when we occupied the Rizangra Chingla complex, the most dominating features, you know, looking uh, onto his uh, Moldo garrison and uh, across on the other side, we occupied the South Bank, we occupied even, you know, higher heights over the Finger Four, you know, dominating all the locations that uh, the PLA had occupied. Uh, he was brought back to the negotiating table. And uh, you surprised him quite a bit. They were, you know, well planned, well thought out, mm. and executed. You know, achieving total surprise exactly. on the PLA. You, he never expected that. You know, we will do this kind of action, and the credit goes to the soldier on the ground, the junior leaders. You know, who had planned, rehearsed. Uh, you know, while we may say that since June 15, when Galwan happened, you know, this happened in August. You know, but this is the time. You know, you have to. You are aware of Ladakh how it happens. We have to build up our forces. We have to stage them forward without escalating the situation. We had to achieve surprise. So we did a training, we did a planning, and finally, you know, the right moment, we executed this. And you took tanks to... We took tanks to Rizangra uh, Chinla, you know, which can, which was unthinkable, actually. Exactly. Um, a couple of months ago. Yeah, and it was never done before. I mean, that's the whole Absolutely. issue. So talking, uh, continuing to talk about South Bank. Uh, see, uh, so that advantage you got, and... Uh, you saw the, noticed a change of attitude in the Chinese uh, Absolutely. approach. Absolutely. So, uh, it still took uh, three, four more rounds. Correct. You uh, know, he was still looking for a face saver. Exactly. And and you know, finally he understood hmm. that, uh, you know, we were looking at Shadows Co. ante April 2020. That's right. And we're not going to budge. Correct. So, I think he realized that. Hmm. And uh, while in the next three flag meetings, till the ninth Kokomanala flag meeting, hmm. He continued to look for a face-over mm. and uh, then he relented. So, uh, the breakthrough came in the final ninth round? Mm, ninth, absolutely. Okay. And it was the longest... And of course, a lot of back channels have been happening. The Defence Minister met and spoke. The right. Foreign Minister met and spoke. Mm. And the NSA have been speaking. Yes. So, it, it was a whole of a nation approach. Of course. And finally, mm. of course, in the ninth Kokomo level flag meeting, mm. um, we so, had this resolution. Uh, also, I think, they will, uh, were they surprised that uh, we had an MEA representative in the delegation? Yeah, so it was initially agreed mm-hmm. that uh, both sides will have a rep. Okay. So the Chinese had also had the rep of the Ocean and Boundary Affairs. Mm-hmm. Their rep had come, uh, you know, who handles this. And I mean, rep uh, has been there, right. which was a huge advantage, actually. Exactly. As you mentioned, whole of government approach Absolutely. helped. So there is no uh, differences that are seen or uh, are perceived. Um, on the South Bank, uh, before I move on to the other one, there is this, uh, you know, a uh, lot of writings that are happening by some people, some commentators that should we have had uh, uh, not uh, sort of vacated South Bank, having gained the advantage. You're uh, talking about Rizangla Chinla. Rizangla, Rizangla. Yeah, so Rizangla Chinla is a dominating feature right. on the Kalash Ranges. Mm. We have occupied it, mm. but it was done with a purpose. Right. You know, uh, it was done with a purpose to push the negotiations to disengagement. And that is what happened, mm-hmm. you know. So... Uh, it is, it is not that, you know, it is an advantage in perpetuity. Correct. Now we can't, uh, you know, equate the occupation of Rizangra Chinla and try to resolve the entire boundary issue with this. You can't be greedy. Yeah. So it was the purpose that has been done mm. and uh, disengagement is happening. Yes. You know, which we are looking at mm. in the areas where we were at a disadvantage, the right. North Bank. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we need to restore the status quo ante. Correct. That was the first purpose uh, yeah, in any case. 
it's not about resolving the lac fully absolutely mm. but uh, like uh, there's uh, in this context itself there's the apprehension what if they come and occupy again after this so uh, you know the uh, disengagement was premised on the fact mm. that you know we will not occupy again obviously right and uh, having done this uh, you know we have sort of indicated our intent very clearly to the pla that uh, we will not allow a unilateral change right of the status quo on the on the lsc and mm. the message has been sort of understood well by yeah. them and uh, in the ninth kumarale flag meeting there has been an agreement that these areas will not be reoccupied right and in any case you will keep a vigil i'm sure it's... absolutely mm. yeah so we have now the force levels uh, adequately available mm. plans are in place mm. and uh, isr is in place correct and i'm sure he, he will uh, not, uh, not do all that okay so let's uh, let's move to the you know, next typically like you know court comes to my mind ki doodh ka jala you know charge bhi phoonke bhi tha bilkul yeah, that is true and i, I think uh, now we know because uh, your force levels have really enhanced uh, since uh, so 2020 2010 yes. when you came to ladakh when yes. i was the brigade commander here right, right. there were two battalions you know exactly. the entire area absolutely and now we have over you know 90000 troops exactly. uh, initial ladakh and you have a, what one division worth of armor if i am not mistaken hmm. quite a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh moving on uh, now the other friction points which are these other friction points so the other friction points are you know we start with depsang right then we have in the soksalu salient mm-hmm. the pp15 pp17 alpha mm-hmm. and then of course we have the cnn junction that right. is the the, the nimchok area right and uh, like i said that uh, once we agree to disengagement mm-hmm. it was also agreed that the day the disengagement happens finishes uh, within 48 hours we'll have a, another kokorno level flag meeting correct uh and and then we will discuss all the uh, other areas you know and resolve them exactly so the depsang has been an old issue for some time uh what is the issue there you see depsang uh, one has to understand uh, is not related to the present uh, imbroglio that is uh, because of which we launched uh, snow leopard mm. this is a legacy issue right and as i mentioned earlier 2010 when a brigade commander here this this was a flashpoint then as well correct and uh, the other thing you have to understand is this is the area where the areas of differing perception is the largest okay and uh, uh, and like i said it predates the present situation and uh, so since uh, it is the largest area you know our patrols go so they want to give us a face off and when their patrols come we give them a face off so that is what is the situation prevailing there now the situation is not volatile right and it has to be resolved at some level and i'm sure it will get resolved resolve. but what is the connection there of the 1959 claim line so called 1959 claim line you see 1959 claim line we don't recognize mm-hmm. this was unilaterally proposed by chawan lai right. later to the then prime minister jawala nehru yes and uh, and our stand has always been that we don't do not recognize uh, the 1959 uh, 7 november yes. 1959 claim line so they have been reiterating that and they want to come to that uh, claim line which we have not been permitting since we don't recognize that and uh, in that area their claim line comes up to burtse if i am not know the mistaken. 1959 claim line was on a very small scale map right so it's very difficult to exactly sort of clarify it that till where it comes okay. or doesn't come and all it that it was a, it was not a very serious uh, thing that india wanted uh, anyway discussed like you mentioned india correct. never recognized it correct That's absolutely there. so what are the other the, the gogra and hot springs what is the issue there uh, the issue is that you know this is also the area where uh, the sort of initial face offs happened the troops there are not in contact but we want to sort of in those areas also go back to our respective uh, permanent post right and so that will not take much time i don't think uh, so and okay. that will get resolved uh, in a right. time frame yeah so let's look at some of the lessons uh, of operation snow leopard yeah so snow leopard is still continuing yes. it is not finished and uh, we are compiling our lessons but the the one thing which stands out very clearly that we need to renew our focus towards the northern borders and when i say that you know in terms of kbd development right and kbd development two things one is the infra and second is the deterrence you know and action is in hand mm-hmm. you know at uh, in 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 both these respects we've got to infra lots has happened and lots you know is now happening sure. to ensure that you know we have the requisite infrastructure here mm-hmm. so that the forces are able to mobilize in the given time and with regard to kbd development you know rebalancing has already been ordered by the army headquarters and that will now happen sure and uh, plus of course there are some minor tactical lessons and so many others mm. which we will continue to compile and Obviously. Uh, push that but yeah. uh, in terms of tactical lessons or you know of how the speed of response mm. uh, has really surprised uh, not just the chinese but uh, people the world over the face off that you uh, affected immediately uh, 
there are lessons or maybe there are advantages. What has changed, you know, over these years, uh, logistics and otherwise? Yeah, so lots have changed. You know, once the intent of the PLA, you know, we were able to discern. You know, initially we were surprised right. uh, when uh, sort of we broke all the agreements and uh, right. came with large strength and all that. But uh, the moment the intent was clear, you know, the entire juggernaut of the Indian Armed Forces, uh, you know, got moving, got mobilized. We had the C-17s, the strategic lift, you know, sure. totally focused towards Eastern mm-hmm. Ladakh. And we had the Chinooks coming in for a tactical lift to, you know, bring troops mm-hmm. into the areas that were required. We had the BRO working day and night to ensure that uh, both the axes are kept open, you know, for a longer period than uh, right. even during the heavy mm-hmm. snowfall that was happening. We had a lot of local support, you know, uh, in Ladakh. And uh, we were able to hire a lot of local machinery, the JCBs and, you know, vehicles, light vehicles, etc. Yeah. So the entire system, you know, it was a whole of nation yeah, approach. Yeah. And uh, we airlifted, you know, thousands of tons of, you know, tanks and APCs and troops, uh, you know. We had and uh, food and everything, otherwise. billeting. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, you know, that is how sort of. No, but that's a great lesson. I think. Absolutely a great lesson. And, uh, and uh, like I said, the renewed focus towards the northern borders. We need to... Gives confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, final question. What's the uh, roadmap now? I mean, in terms of uh, agreements since 1993, they've all been broken, if you really see. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, as a whole of nation approach, of course, there will be other discussions that will happen at the higher level. As an army commander, what would you like uh, to happen on this LAC? Yeah, so I would like a clarification of the LAC. <laughs> You know, that's that's the end result, what we're right. looking at. Mm. Uh, but given the present situation, uh, once the disengagement happens, we have the flag meeting, we discuss the other friction areas, resolve those, and then we'll have to sit down you know, at a higher level, at the diplomatic level, and look at new protocols. You know, since the Chinese, the PLA had sort of broken all the earlier, we have multiple agreements, you know, which uh, were signed to ensure that the status quo on the LSE remains, which they have broken. So we'll have to now look at new protocols. Correct. And post that, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, we have to look at the clarification, clarification. of the LSE. Only then sort of we'll uh, have some kind of peace on the LSE. Great. Thank you very much, Jan Thank Joshi, you. for your time and uh, you. such great insights. And uh, congratulations you. for what you have done. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>